Hey guys, this is Travis Elliott, and welcome to Yin Yoga Improve Flexibility. This class is from Interdimension TV, our monthly streaming platform where you can get full access to all of my programs like Flexibility and Beyond, Yin Yoga Sleep Well, and much, much more. I have my series, my classes. You can also practice with other amazing yoga teachers. So if you're interested in a 10-day free trial, I'll leave a link down below. You can click on it, check it out, see if you love it. Also, remember to hit that subscribe button down below. And now, let's go ahead and improve some flexibility in this yin yoga class. All right, let's work on improving our flexibility in yoga style by starting off in child's pose. So big toes together, open the knees out. Let the hips shift back towards the heels and then start to draw your forehead down towards the floor or you could even use a block to go underneath the head as well. And then I'm gonna do this salter variation where I rotate the palms up to the sky. So some external rotation through the shoulders, but you could keep the palms flat or even bring the arms behind you as well. And if there's any discomfort in your knees or your hips, you could place a pillow or a bolster between your heels and your hips for support. And then you just begin to allow gravity to do its thing. There's this concept called Wu Wei, which means going with the flow instead of against the flow. So you can go with the flow of gravity, allowing the hips to gently draw downward, giving you that stretch across the whole lower back and the lower spine, proving flexibility there. And then each inhale, inviting the breath to move all the way down into the belly, the lower back, so the belly expands in all directions like a balloon. Each exhale, the belly deflates as the air empties out of the body. And enjoying this time that you carved out of your day for 30 minutes, half an hour. To just move your attention inward and enjoy that there's no emails to write, no phone calls to make no errands to run but this is time solely devoted to you Now, if you do have a block or a prop underneath the forehead, go ahead and slide that off to the side. Begin to crawl your upper body over to the right. So a little side stretch, child's pose, left hand on top of right hand. Releasing the forehead down onto the floor or a prop. Creating length across the whole entire left side of your torso. From here, slowly crawl yourself all the way over to the left, right hand on top of left hand, creating length across the whole right side body.
From here, come back down the middle, back down the center. Give the forehead a little gentle rock side to side. And then tabletop pose, come all the way up to all fours position. As we now set up for dragon pose, so bring the right foot, right leg forward, slide the left knee, left leg back, scoot the right foot a little over to the right. I'm gonna grab my block here, and then I'll bring the elbows and the forearms down towards the block, getting deep into that right hip area. So our hip, the largest joint in the body, where some of the largest muscle and tissue and bones intersect. Very important to make sure that if we do want to improve flexibility, that we keep those hips nice and open. Those of you that are athletes, this practice will help support your athletic endeavors so that whatever you do, you're able to do it with greater efficiency and greater ease. So when the body has excess tension and rigidity, it's kind of like trying to drive your car with the emergency brake engaged. It takes a lot more effort, increases wear and tear on the vehicle because of that brake. So you can imagine this improved flexibility in yoga class is like you're disengaging the brake so that the vehicle of your body can move in that more efficient, light way. So trust the process. Focus on the breathing, allowing your, your breath to be like a mantra. And anytime your mind starts thinking about stuff that you have to do, places you gotta go, that you let go of that distractive thought and you come back to that breath. So equally physical as it is mental. Strengthening your ability to direct your mind where you choose it to go. As the Buddha said, a happy mind is a disciplined mind. At this point, I'm just going to take the block off to the side. I'm ready to drop the elbows, the forearms down. But feel free to find the depth that feels appropriate for you. Typically looking for about 30, 40, 50 percent max of your stretch. So you want it to be more gentle, nothing aggressive, nothing that you're pushing your way into. For many of us, when we think about improving our flexibility, think we have to jam our way into these stretching positions. But in order to improve flexibility within the deeper connective tissues, that approach actually backfires. So it's all about softening, letting go, letting be, and just letting time and gravity do its thing and finding that Wu Wei approach. Nice, go ahead and come all the way back up onto the hands. Shift that right foot back over, bring the right hand to the outside of the right foot, and then bring the right leg, right knee back before we do the same thing on the other side. We'll come into camel pose. So let's tuck the toes underneath so the heels lift up, bring the hands around to the lower back. You can either do your fingers down or your fingers up, wherever it feels most comfortable for you. Keep the hips above the knees. Start to lean back. Make sure that you don't let the head come back, but keep the chin slightly down. If your spine is more open, then maybe release the hands back onto the heels here. 
and we'll be here for about a minute, minute and a half. Nothing too long, but long enough to improve flexibility within our spine. As we often say in yoga, flexible spine equals a flexible mind. That the spine is really an extension of the brain. The gray matter that runs inside the spine is the same gray matter inside of our brain. Couple more breaths there. If you need to come out early, all good. Honor your body. Good, you guys. Go ahead and ease your way all the way back up. Spine might feel a little bit tender. It's pretty normal. Bring the hands down onto the ground, tabletop pose. Take a moment, let the spine neutralize to that deep stretch. And then cat and cow, inhale, drop the belly, heart forward. And exhale, slowly round the back. So here's your counter stretch. Try that on your own a few more times. If you can, do it with the eyes closed. See how slow you can breathe. See how slow you can move. Come back to a neutral spine, and then now we'll come into the dragon on the other side. So step the left foot forward, slide that left foot over to the left. I'll grab my block. You can grab your prop if needed. Start to get in there as if you're going to explore the caves inside the body, the cave of the left hip. We have yin and yang in Taoism. Yin traditionally means shade and yang means light. So yin is all about exploring what's deep, what's dark, what's often hidden. And stillness is really the doorway into that realm of all things yin. So let the body be still. Let the mind be still and allow that stillness to be the medicine that your nervous system needs.
feel like you want to go deeper and you have the block, you can remove that. Forearms, elbows making contact to the ground. Or maybe you stay where you're at because that's enough. So in yin, we're looking for the strength of self-restraint, which means to be able to pull back when you need to. To not jam your way into a position where you simply don't belong. Beautiful, ease your way up onto the hands. Step the left leg, left foot back, tabletop pose. Slide the knees back behind the hips and then take a couple rounds of hip circles here. So a couple revolutions, one direction. A couple revolutions, the other direction. Back to neutral, crawl the knees forward, halfway up your yoga mat, cross the feet behind you, release down onto those sit bones, and then go ahead and extend your left leg straight out in front of you, bend your right foot back by your outer right hip, and then either open your right knee out to the right for what we call half frog, or you can modify it and bring the sole of the foot to the inner thigh of half frogs too intense on the knee so whatever feels best for your body either way you're going to turn the torso over to the right at an angle and then you're going to begin to crawl your torso forward and out so that you get into your inner legs your inner thighs the adductors and if you're in the half frog variation, you'll also get into the right knee. You'll feel that slow, sustained, pressurized effect. And this is what makes yin yoga so powerful. It's that slow, slow, sustained touch that activates the fibroblasts that lay down more collagen and more elastin within the fascial matrix so that the connective tissues become stronger more durable, more resilient, and more elastic, more supple. And it all happens just by holding these poses for longer durations of time. And like many things in nature, you can't rush the process. And when you do, it actually backfires. So you gotta let time let gravity and let the process just do its thing.
keeping the lower body as is from here we'll crawl the upper body out towards that left leg you can reach your hands out maybe grab the shin or the foot and then just begin to fold over and down to your own degree now improving the flexibility across the whole back side of your left leg Go ahead and ease your way all the way back up. Extend your right leg straight out in front of you. And then we'll set up for half frog on the other side. So left foot bends back by the outer left hip or the modification half butterfly sole of the foot to the inner thigh. Once you get that lower body set, turn at an angle there and just begin to crawl out. An old Japanese proverb that says, the bamboo that bends with the wind is stronger and more resilient than the oak tree that resists. So the oak tree is the embodiment of all strength, but no flexibility so that when the storms come, the branches get snapped in two. But when the storms encounter the bamboo, it bends in a malleable way with the wind. So if we want to cultivate a body that can withstand the storms that it inevitably encounters, if we want to become less likely to be injured, to have health issues, then yin yoga is not a luxury, but a necessity within our life, even if it's once or twice a week. To carve out a little bit of time within our routines, within our life, to make sure that our body is more like bamboo and less like the oak tree. Keep the torso down low, crawl over by the right foot, right leg, grab whatever feels right. Take an inhale, lengthen out, and exhale, fall.
Slowly ease your way back up. Ah, and extend your left leg straight out in front of you. When you're ready, come down onto your back. Rest the right ankle over the left knee, left thigh, setting up for reclining thread the needle pigeon. So right hand reaches through the legs, either grabbing the left hamstring or the left shin, or you could even leave the left foot on the ground or on top of a block, totally fine. Maybe in a power yoga pose or a power yoga practice, you go deeper, but because it's yin, you're doing a softer variation than normal. Just getting back into that right hip. Now, keep the body as is, as cactus, the arms open. Lower body stays the same. You're gonna come into what we call the tripod twist. So the right foot's gonna come over to the left, right foot's gonna land on the ground, but the right knee still faces up towards the sky. Feel free to look up here at the screen if it's helpful for you, if this is a new variation. And your outer right hip is still gently pressing forward. Bring the legs and the knees back up to neutral, uncross the right leg, and then set the left ankle on the right knee, right thigh. Maybe the foot stays on the floor or a block, or perhaps the left hand reaches through the legs and you grab shin or back of the thigh, thread the needle pigeon on the other side. Keep your legs as is, cactus the arms open, tripod twist to the other side, just let that left foot come over to the right, this time left knee still facing the ceiling. Good, bring the legs back up to neutral, uncross the legs, and then slide right into corpse pose. Extending the legs out, taking up some real estate with the body. Almost like when you were a kid and used to do snow angels in the ground. Let the legs, let the arms open out wide and relax every fiber in the body. 
for these last couple of minutes, deep relaxation, Shavasana. Nice and easily start to come back to the body just by moving the fingertips and the toes. Hug the knees and the thighs into the belly, either rolling over onto one side or gently rock and roll your way up to a last final comfortable seat. Both hands to prayer in front of the chest, in front of the heart, sitting up tall in that embodiment of your strength and your power. Ever so slightly bowing the forehead down in that embodiment of your grace and your humility. Backs of the thumbs up to the center of the forehead for clarity of mind. Fingers to the mouth for thoughtfulness of speech and backs of the hands to the center of the chest, the heart for consistency of action, allowing your yoga to shine through all that you think, all that you say, and all that you do. Much health, much wealth, and much love to you. Namaste. All right, you guys, that is it for that yin yoga practice. I hope you enjoyed it. Drop me a comment down below and let me know how it was. Also remember to hit that subscribe button and come check out Inner Dimension TV for more content, full programs like Flexibility and Beyond where you can just go deep into an eight week yin yoga program or yin yoga sleep well for 30 days. We'd love to have you within that community. That's it for now. We'll see you next time. Thank you.